Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, uh, I got some upgrades going on here. I'm trying to, to figure this thing out. So hopefully, hopefully this will work. Um, we're just, it's kind of a trial and error here. So the other thing I want to do is get some, uh, some earphones so I can actually try to hear myself talk here. Um, first off, so two things in today's vlog. Uh, one, we're going to start off with reading uh, the comments from my Purdue Notre Dame vlog, which was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> you know, that, thank you, thank you to everybody that's watched that. It's done very well. Um, I like to try to get back with some of the comments that people make, but this one, there was a lot of them. And so, and I mean, for me, it's a lot. 11 for me is a lot. That's, we're getting into, you know, it just shows you the channel is growing and people are actively engaged, which is great. Uh, so what I thought I would do is I would start this vlog off by reading some of the comments and just kind of responding to each one of them. So hope you all don't mind that, but here we go. Or actually, before we do that, I'm going to read the comments and then we're going to go into two major announcements yesterday came through in the theme park industry. Uh, one was Cedar Point, which <laughs> if you haven't seen that one, you're in for a treat. Two is SeaWorld Orlando. Uh, we just got uh, word yesterday that we're going to get, be getting a brand new indoor attraction. Yes, they listened. <laughs> so I, I can't wait for that. So what I thought I'd do is we're going to do this and then I'm going to take you to both those videos and then we'll show each one of them and then we'll talk about it. All right, and also, um, again, you, if you can see by some of my last vlogs that I've done, I'm getting used to the screen recording, so I've been, you know, throwing little bits and pieces in there, so hopefully, you know, I can do it with this one as well. So I hope you all enjoy this. Let's get this vlog started. As I like to say, let's get our ass in gear. Welcome, everybody. All right, so this one, to start out with, uh, this first one, uh, uh, Diego Lopez, uh, it says, I always love watching videos of alumni going back to, to their school and going to a football or basketball game. My father attended Notre Dame, so I'm glad we won. Yeah, thank you very much for your comment. I, I will say this, all right? And as much as this uh, pains me to admit this, um, huh, here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna, I can do this. Notre Dame, y'all played a good game. You really did. I mean, you guys were flawless. We played like shit. Notre Dame played, I mean, everything they did turned to gold, eh? hence the, you know, <laughs> the Irish. But yeah, they, you guys were dialed in. Either that or we were really dialed out, one of the two. But I mean, my theory is anytime you can score that number of points, you're doing something right. Either that or the other team's really, really bad. But they had it all together. So, I mean, they do, you guys do deserve some credit for that. So that was, it was a big win. Uh, this one says, just watch your video. This is from uh, James Seller, 2929. I'm a Notre Dame alumnus, 71, and have attended every Notre Dame Purdue game since 1966, including this one. <laughs> High school buddies all attended Purdue. I was all set to take great pleasure in your unhappiness, but I was entirely on your side after a few minutes into the video. I just wish uh, I could have taken some bad losses to Purdue with the class you showed in the video. Well done. <laughs> you know, but that's all. That's what it's about. It's... Um, as much as it sucks to see your team get their ass handed to them, you still got to do it in a in a fine fashion. You know, it's 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 okay to have some fun. You know, some rivalry. You know, like like you know, we started a little f the Irish chant. You know, it's it's not meant you know obviously to to directly to somebody. It's just it's just in good fun. You know, obviously the one thing where I draw the line is where people literally take to to legit anger. And, and fighting in the stands, you know, um, there's been countless times uh, more recently in, in college and pro where people have gone to jail, uh, sometimes for a very, very long time because they accidentally killed somebody by wanting la landing one wrong punch to the wrong area, to the wrong guy, and your whole life is over. You know, I mean, I, I don't understand this stuff. You know, people... Yes, it's great to get excited. It really, really is. I, I love the emotion that comes along with football, especially college and pro football, you know, and even basketball and the rivalry games. It's phenomenal. I love the rivalry games. But you got to do it in a way that, you know, demonstrates some class, too. You know, were the people in front of us obnoxious? Yeah. 
But if I'm if I'm at Notre Dame Stadium next year and Purdue's winning, am I going to be obnoxious in a more better way? Probably, but not to the point where obviously we're going to start fighting with anybody. Absolutely not. I don't. I I completely draw the line at that. Or even like like playful. You know, like you know, people are like oh, your team sucks. Yeah, you know, go go piss off. You know, <laughs> just little funny stuff. But you know, the fighting shit and the the over aggressive behavior, I can't, I can't, I got no no place for that. Like oh, perfect example. Last year, New England Patriots were playing somebody. I think it was the Eagles at early season last year, and some fan got mad and hit some old guy right in the face, full full blown punch, and uh, killed him. And now, for one split-second decision over a football game, your life's over. You know, so, man, people, please, keep, keep your shit in check, okay? So this one now, this next one, uh, Scott25368, uh, this showed up on my recommended videos list, so I watched it. I'm also a Purdue alumni. Ah, fellow Boilermaker, I feel your pain. Uh, I have season tickets. I was at the game, too. Sad day. Can't wait for basketball season, though. That's become a known Purdue uh, quote uh, when football season starts going off the rails, usually by the second game of the season. Uh, can't wait for basketball season. Um, I ha also have Disney AP, so visit several times a year with Southwest from Indy. Subscribe to your channel now. Scott, thanks for the subscription. Appreciate it. Hope you're entertained. I plan on bringing you, you and everybody else a lot of good stuff over the next several years. Uh, this is Michael Malloy, 2399. Never been to Purdue. Looks fun. Also never seen one of those uh, robots in real life. What he's referring to is that was my first time seeing those. Uh, Purdue has these these delivery robots that drive around campus and apparently go to your dorm and deliver food. And we were joking, my brother and my dad and I, you know, like what would prevent somebody from just walking over and flipping one on its side you know can it ride itself or would you just delay somebody's food order for for forever or how do those things know when to cross the road so you don't get smoked by a semi i mean just so many questions i have i mean living in orlando here we got a lot of you know pretty up-to-date things especially with disney but in universal and all the parks but i've never seen that that's a new concept so that was kind of it was kind of interesting um K. Bruski, number one, says, nice video, but you missed about eight touchdowns. <laughs> I bet you haven't been able to sit all week after that butt kicking. <laughs> they got the shamrocks. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty brutal ass whipping. I will tell you, I've been to a lot of Purdue games my whole life, pretty much since I was old enough to walk and talk, and that's probably one of the worst I've witnessed. Well, actually, you all, I think I pointed it out on my vlog, you all got to witness history. Whether you're for Notre Dame or Purdue, that was the worst ass beating Purdue ever took in their home stadium. I mean... Oh, man, all the records. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I missed the eight touchdowns. You see, I didn't have enough SD card space for all those. I had to, you know, I had enough room for Purdue's one, and that was about it. But, you know, had Purdue scored more, I would have cleared up some more room on my SD card, you know. Thanks for the comment. Appreciate it. And this one says, I'm a Notre Dame alum, but I have so many uh, family. This is from, uh, I think it's Jesse P.A. I'm a Notre Dame alum, but I have so many family and friends who have or will graduate from Purdue. I'm glad we beat you guys, but I felt bad for my family who wasted money on that game. Go Irish. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a brutal game, man. Then somebody, uh, Greg, replied, says that was the worst butt kicking in history. <laughs> uh, another one, uh, Steven Stagger said, go Irish. And then Greg, J831, says, glad you got to hang out with the family, but if I were a Boilermaker fan, I'd be wearing a paper sack over my head. And how can they sit down after that destruction? Notre Dame coach Marcus Freeman had no right to run up the score like that. Now, I will say to you, uh, Greg, thank you for the comment, but here's my opinion on the running the score up, all right? And this goes for both sides in any game. I don't think that you should ever let up. You know, if you are completely destroying somebody, then you keep doing that. If they can't stop you, even with your second and third string in, that is not that is not the issue of the team that is winning. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel like uh, how many examples have we seen, you know, where a team has been up by an insane amount of points? Think about the uh, Atlanta Falcons versus the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Uh, what was that, 28 to 3 or something like that? Um, my, my team... Uh, two years ago, the Minnesota Vikings were down 36-3 to against the Indianapolis Colts. 
Uh, and then, you know, Purdue versus Georgia in the Outback Bowl. I think it was 1999, up 26, 27 to nothing. Uh, I mean, we can go on and on and on. And what ends up happening? These teams start playing a different game because, oh, we don't. I mean, I'm not saying that's the, that was their method, but every time it sure looks like that's the ideal they're following. You know, oh, we don't want to run the score up, so let's kind of change our game plan. And then what happens? Oh, well, you know, you end up allowing one or two scores right off the rip. Oh, crap. Oh, now we got to change our game plan now and get back into our, our scoring points mode. And then you get all off kilter. And now you've got a comeback on your hands. And I really think that that's what leads a lot of these comebacks is people, the, these coaches are like, oh, let's just go easy on them now. And even as much as I hated to see that, if Purdue can't stop Notre Dame, even their second and third string, then you know what? That's on Purdue. You know, I don't blame Notre Dame for running the score up at all. In fact, if it was the other way around, I would be this, you know, I'd have the same opinion. Um, but I just, uh, yeah, I think it's it's only it's only right. You know, you got to keep, as they say, you got to keep your foot on the throttle and you don't let up until uh, zero zeros are on the clock. Thank you. Thanks for the comment. Uh, this one, uh, SJJCWS is Bad Omen. Yeah, I think they're referring to my flight experience before even getting back home. It's like it kind of set the stage for the Purdue game. Uh, awesome time, though, at home with the family. But, yeah, it was kind of interesting how all that played out, <laughs> you know, with the, the flight and the game. Uh, flight was even delayed two hours coming back. I mean, no big deal. This stuff, again, is very minor in comparison. This is not that big a deal compared to life events. <laughs> that could, you know, really be shitty, but it's just, it is interesting how that whole thing kind of set the stage for the game and everything with the way Purdue played. And then this one, uh, uh, Will getting told said, never fly frontier. Well, I can tell you what, uh, Will, that's probably one of my few times that I will ever fly frontier. I do have a credit with them. Um, flying at some point, you know, cause I got that money that I spent for the flight that I did miss. I got that returned in a credit, which originally they weren't going to do anything. You know, the, the, the flight, the attendants at the counter at Orlando Airport were just like, if you don't take this 21-hour flight to Denver and then to Grand Rapids, then there's nothing we can do for you. And I said, I'm out that money. And they just said, yeah, pretty much. I'm like, what are you, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, let's just take this guy's money. Let's just take people's money, you know? I mean, so that's when I was like, no, I'm not letting this go. So that's that's when I got home and, you know, I've, having been in the fire service for a lot of years, I've always been like, listen, let's let's gather our emotions. Let's not make decisions when we're pissed. That's always when bad shit happens. I've learned that from day one. You don't make decisions when you're pissed off or, or frustrated. You have to calm down, take a deep breath and then regroup. And that's what I did. And that's why I got everything moving. And so it, it all worked out. So I'll, I'll use their, their flight credit at some point, probably for going home at Christmas time, or maybe as a one way up to, you know, I want to go see other football games. I want to go see a Vikings game uh, at home. I want to go obviously to Tennessee this year and see what any volunteer alumni or fans watching this. Uh, I want to see what your house looks like. I want to see a game from Neyland stadium. Um, I think that would be a treat. And then I uh, also would love, love, love to get to go to Soldier Field for the Vikings and Bears. I think that would be a cool game to see as well. So I have some plans in place. I just I'm going to try to see if I can make things work. And hopefully, hopefully this will happen. So again, thank you all very much for the comments. I really appreciate it. It was it was awesome. That video did very well. Uh, again, thank you all for watching. And yeah, Notre Dame, you got us on this one. But I will see you all in South Bend next year. And we're gonna we're gonna hopefully uh, do a little bit better, a little bit better. Uh, the last time I think I've seen Purdue beat Notre Dame was in 2003 when we had Kyle Orton and they rolled into South Bend and just put the steam rolling on the old Irish there. That was when um, was it Stubblefield I think had that big old uh, pass to uh, Orton to Stubblefield or somebody like that. It was like they were backed up. Purdue was backed up against uh, their own goal line. And he threw a little little lob pass and stubble feeling caught it at like the 15 or 20 and just broke that tackle and was gone. That was like a 99 yard touchdown or something like something crazy like that. So, but yeah, that's the last uh, thing. That's the last time I think we've beat Notre Dame in their stadium. So, 
Let's let's uh, let's regroup. Uh, we got a got a game tomorrow. Purdue's got to play Oregon, Oregon State, and the schedule doesn't get easier from there. I'll tell you that they said Purdue has the seventh hardest schedule in the nation. <laughs> Leave it to Purdue to get that kind of a schedule. I mean, we've got teams coming up. We got to play Nebraska, who's a very different team this year. They got to play Illinois, who's currently undefeated. We got to play. Uh, we got to play Ohio State this year at the Horseshoe. We've got. Oregon, the Ducks at home, who's highly ranked. We've got to play, uh, who else is there on the schedule? Uh, North, yeah, I mean, Northwestern can be either or. Um, but then we got to play Penn State. That's at Purdue. And then we go on the road to finish the season at Michigan State and Indiana, who both of those teams are a quiet 3-0. and So, yeah, not going to get much easier from here, Boiler. So, as I've been told many times, get your head out of your ass and let's get back to playing. Um, I know they're more capable than what they proved on Saturday, and it's up to the coach and everybody to get them riled up and get them ready to go. So let's boil her up for tomorrow. And once again, Irish, you guys kicked our ass. It was a great game, but again, we'll see you all next year in South Bend. Thanks again for the comments. Appreciate it. Now on to part two of our morning podcast, vlog, whatever, um, please let me know how it's sounding to all of you. I went through and reviewed my first uh, my first part where I was talking about the comments from the Purdue Notre Dame game. It sounds pretty good on my end, so again, let me know because I've been working on adjustments with this thing. I'll tell you what, for a, a $89 uh, boom mic, just for something to get started with, this is pretty good. This is from, uh, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Mayono or Maono. Seem pretty happy with it. It's got a lot of features. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add in a um, like a mixer board, so I have all my controls next to me where I don't have to keep on. Because right now I got to unplug and plug the mic because it's running through the laptop, and that way I also I'm using my regular camera for the for that's on the computer. The what do you want to call it? The um, oh gosh, yeah, the camera that's that comes included on the. The cam, whatever. <laughs> Words are hard this morning, but anyway, I'm using the uh, the camera that's on the on the computer. Uh, what I want to do is, I'm working on trying to figure out how to get my GoPro hooked up and use that as the camera instead of just the basic one. So, all things in progress, but so far, it looks and sounds pretty good. So again, let me know on, on your end. All right. Anyway, part two. We got some major announcements yesterday, and also, this is kind of a really uh, great time of year if you're a theme park enthusiast. A lot of announcements start coming out right around mid-September-ish because people want to get that excitement ready for spring of and summer of 2025, and yesterday did not disappoint. We got two uh, major announcements, one from Cedar Point and the other one from here locally at home, SeaWorld Orlando. And what we'll do is I will add more of these as I see them. Okay. And I'll kind of break them up into different vlogs and videos because otherwise if I run them all together, I don't want to get too crazy long, but uh, we'll, we'll cover the announcements as they come out. And what's really neat is anything announced now for next year, uh, we'll see a lot of that at IAPA this year. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm going to get a chance to go to that this year. Uh, it's been my goal for the last several years to go to that and uh, haven't been able to just because of work and everything. But this year, I'm really, really going to try because also working in the theme parks now as a, as a paramedic, uh, I believe we get a special rate to go to IAPA. I, can use, they, they ha I asked one of our uh, managers about it, and they said that there's a special, um, they give you a certain coupon or a, or a pass. There's something they give you that allows you to get a ticket for a fraction of the price. Because if you don't belong to any organization, you just buy an exhibitor ticket, it's like $475 it, for one day. It's crazy expensive. So hopefully I get to go to IAPA this year and we can see some of these creations in person, which is a, IAPA is a big showcase. If you've never been, it's here locally in Orlando and it showcases all of the amusement and theme park industry and it is just incredible the stuff that gets brought every year. A lot of they bring in a lot of attractions that you can ride. 
um, a lot of hands-on stuff. It's it's pretty badass. It's usually the first or second week of November. So, all right, without wasting any more time, let's get in to announcement number one. And to me, I think this is the biggest one of all. I mean, SeaWorlds is good, don't get me wrong, but check this out. This is Cedar Point. Siren's Curse. Man. What a freaking... Leave it Leave it to Cedar Point, you know? They are always pushing the envelope. I, I grew up going to Cedar Point. I went for the very first time when I was uh, six or seven. And that place... That was basically like my version of Disney Disney World, Disneyland, and all these other parks. Because I, I didn't get a chance to see the Florida parks till I was well into my thirties. So, uh, Cedar point is, is unbelievable. I, I am definitely booking a flight and a hotel for next spring because I will be there to ride that, that I, that tilt coaster thing. Uh, wow. Can you imagine being in the front car on that? And there's nothing at the edge of the track. I mean, when, woo -hoo, or, or being in the back, because on the back car, you know, you're you're all the way at the top. You're gonna get that full vertical drop from the back car. Man, I know what it feels like. Anybody that's ever ridden Gringotts uh, roller coaster at Universal Orlando, um, that one has a tilt track in it, but it only tilts about 45 degrees, and that's a pretty cool feeling. I cannot imagine being up. I don't know how high that thing is. I haven't read the statistics on it yet, but um, it looks tall. Uh, so you imagine being up that high and t that whole track tilting like that? Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully that'll be a nice substitution for a while because I know there's no word on Top Thrill Dragster 2, uh, or Top Thrill 2. Uh, for those that don't know, that operated for the first, uh, two, two and a half weeks of this current season and it's been down ever since. So yeah, no, no bueno. But hopefully if they get them both going next year be a great year for Cedar Point. So I will be heading to America's Roller Coast next spring. Absolutely. All right, next one. Next one up. SeaWorld Orlando, here locally. They made a big announcement yesterday. Uh, we are actually getting what we've been wanting for a while is an indoor attraction. SeaWorld used to have at least two, okay? Back before 2020 in the, in the closures, SeaWorld had one that was one of their rides that they'd had for years. It was called the Wild Arctic, and that was a motion simulator similar to Star Tours at uh, Hollywood Studios. And it was a, like a flight expedition up into the Arctic. It, it was pretty neat. And then when you got off of the ride, it was like you were in the Arctic base station. I mean, the theming on it was top-notch. For a ride that was probably built I'm guessing in the late 80s, early 90s, um, the, the theme on that is absolutely incredible because there's a lot of uh, beluga whale exhibits and so, some really cool things. Actually, I have to work today at, um, at SeaWorld. And once I, I'm done early, so what we'll do is I will, once I'm done working, I'll start a vlog and I'll, I will go out there and we'll cover this area and I'll show you where I think it's going to go and uh, what it's going to be, and we'll we'll kind of do a little deeper dive into it, which I think would be pretty cool, because I think if they keep it the exhibit like it is, this is going to be awesome. It's going to be really good. So without wasting any more time on this side, let's take a look at what SeaWorld's bringing us for 2025.
first of its kind Arctic Flying Theater. That looks pretty freaking cool, man. That looks awesome. As as I said earlier, SeaWorld it was in really, really, really desperate need of indoor attractions. Like I said, they used to have two. There was the Wild Arctic Expedition, and then there was the Penguin, uh, Empire of the Penguin. And with those both being gone now, it's a lot harder for when the weather gets bad. There's nothing for people to do. I get, I would get approached, well, I still do when the weather gets bad. I get, if days I'm working, uh, guests will approach me and like, what is there to do? You know, there's no, the, the weather's bad. I'm like, we got the aquariums and that, but it, that is one of the major downfalls of SeaWorld Orlando is during the summertime, when the weather goes bad, there's just not much to do because uh, everything's outdoors. Now, don't get me wrong. They got some phenomenal attractions. They got world-class roller coasters. They got a great kids area in Sesame Street land. They've got great shows with the animals. They got all kinds of cool stuff, but there's nothing indoors as far as attractions go. So hopefully this will be the start of bringing back some of those. They could use another probably two or three indoor attractions so that when bad weather comes during the summer, which takes up about a quarter of the year, you know, it, it gives guests something else to do, you know, especially during the summer when we get some of these rainstorms. Some of these storms are, are, are here and gone in a matter of, of a few minutes to a half an hour. Some they will last hours and can completely F up the rest of the day. So it all depends on, on how the storm goes. So this is a great step forward in that in that aspect. Um, a great job, SeaWorld. I can't wait to see this. I've ridden a couple of these flying theater rides. One, the one probably the most famous one is Soren at Epcot. That is probably without a doubt one of the coolest. Now, some of the other ones I've ridden, which I was very impressed with, uh, I think it's called Masters of Flight at Legoland, uh, Legoland, Florida, where you ride the, the, the quote unquote flying couch. That's pretty cool, um, which is a flying theater style attraction. So I'm very curious as to how they're going to do this, because if I'm not mistaken, they're probably going to do it in a way where it's like the like Wild Arctic, where you would take an expedition off, you know, from, you know, somewhere and you're going to go to the Arctic and see all kinds of cool stuff. And judging by the footage they got there, it looks like it's going to be that super, super high def, you know, ultra realistic type of video. So I can't wait to see that. Uh, spring of 2025. So later on today, we'll do a vlog log out at SeaWorld and we'll go I'll take it to the area where that's going to be where I'm almost guaranteeing it's going to be like I said I'm almost certain it's going to go in the wild arctic building because they gotta they gotta breathe new life into that area and uh really show off the exhibits that are in there because it's really something cool to see you don't want to miss it but right now there's no attraction in there a lot of people miss the exhibit in there so awesome announcement so that wraps up today's vlog. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you all very much for your support. I really appreciate it. Again, thank you for the comments on the Notre Dame-Purdue game. Uh, we got a lot of football coming up tomorrow. Purdue's got to play Oregon State tomorrow night. Uh, boiler up. But, man, like I said, get your head out of your ass and start playing football again. And a uh, lot, of, lot of good stuff. Uh, a lot of good football coming up. Lots of good games tomorrow. Tennessee and Oklahoma in prime time. I can't wait to see that one. That's an ESPN College Game Day special. And then, of course, our full slate of games on Sunday with the NFL. So thank you all very much. I will see you all later this afternoon, early evening. Thanks again for watching. Main Street Fire Rescue is now out of service. I'll see ya.